Welcome to Mercury Unplugged, our way of uncovering the simple truths that lie at the heart of the Mercury vehicles that you sell. I'm Joyce Harvey Spear, and in just a moment, we'll be spotlighting the 2000 Mercury Cougar. What we will uncover, however, remains a mystery, for you see, this program has no script. Cougar is a uniquely designed vehicle with a strong story to tell. And we are pleased to have with us today Jim Morphew, program manager for Cougar, who will give us a behind the scenes engineering story. And to take that technical information and put it into a ready to use package for sales consultants is our automotive consultant, Bob Strange. Before we get started, let's take a listen to what customers say is important about their vehicles. After all, keeping a customer focus is essential to all of us. Um, looking for a sunroof, all the fun things. Um, looking for something that hugs the road very well because of the season changes in Michigan. You have to have something that um, has the ability to stick to the road at all times of year. No, I like it because it's, it's easy to park. Um, I can get in and out. And Go around corners fast. I like good pickup in a vehicle. Um, living down in Florida and getting on the highways, you have to be able to accelerate pretty quickly. Okay, keeping the customer focus in mind, let's begin our discussion on Cougar. Let's start with its new edge design. The exterior of Cougar is certainly impressive and bold, expressive as well. What are some of the attributes that contribute to this impression? Well, one of the things for me, just on an overall view, was the, the creases that you obviously can see in the car. And one of the, the main things I noticed on this particular vehicle is the, the different colors look very different. Some of the colors accentuate certain areas, some of the colors accentuate others. Um, from my point of view, though, overall, I was really thrilled to see a two-door hatchback. I had one of my first cars, in fact, my first car out of college was a European two-door hatchback, and I loved it. And it was great for me to see that uh, Lincoln Mercury decided to do that type of design, because it seems like all the cars anymore look exactly the same. Was that your idea to make it be different? Well, that's one of the things the design team was struggling with, Bob, is that uh, there's a perception, at least in our shops, that cars do look a lot the same. We've rounded everything that can be rounded. So when they <laughs> struck out to do the Cougar, they tried to um, reach for something different, uh, emphasize some design features that would benefit the customers, such as the high rear deck gives you a lot of good load room, allows better headroom in the back. You'll notice the side tumble home, as we call it, of the car isn't as steep as some previous cars. That's, once again, headroom and interior room. And that creates a bit of a wedge shape, and now what do you do with it? Well, instead of going fully rounded, uh, the design studio chose to put some lines down it, kind of break it up a little bit, a little bit of angle with it, and then uh, came up with something wholly new on the headlights. <laughs> Those are headlights you won't see around Mercury dealerships or really uh, many places, and they work quite hard on that. Engineering and design working together to come up with a projector headlamp mm -hmm. uh, that uh, looks the way we want it and still performs excellently. It's actually a little step forward in, uh, in how headlamps work. And also they wanted to keep it a cougar. Mm -hmm. There's a cougar heritage, there's a cougar perception, and attempting once again to reach back to the cougar of 30 years ago that was a two-door. Well, there is a little bit of that wedge look, whatever. When I first saw it, it's like, there's a little bit of that. I remember that from the... Uh, from the late 60s Cougars. It's, yeah. all, it's all in the eye of the, of the beholder. <laughs> uh, we hope we got there to yeah. some degree. Well, that, uh, that, the, the creases and that edge type of style, that's not all that easy to do either, is it? Is it from a design and production standpoint to match everything up and make sure everything looks just right? I think in the last 15 years, we've been able to create more shapes and manufacture more of the shapes that were created there in the studios. Uh, you're right, it is tough. It's a little bit harder to manufacture. But also, um, it just took time. There are quite a few permutations of this Cougar before this one came out. Uh, some look like Lamborghini, some <laughs> look like Camaro. And, um, and settled upon this as something that didn't look much like anything. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the hopes was to introduce Lincoln Mercury into uh, a new group of people that don't go to Lincoln Mercury dealerships now. And I think the preliminary numbers show for Cougar, uh, the average age is some 20 years below the average Lincoln Mercury yeah. dealership age. And when they come in, they want to talk wheels and tires and sunroofs and hatchbacks, so let's <laughs> talk. And, and of course, uh, 
Uh, Mercury dealers now have to respond to that and be prepared to talk about those things, uh, including smaller cars and, and financing and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Say more about the wheels and tires and things. Well, when it comes to wheels, uh, the design studio loves large wheels, bigger and bigger wheels with shorter and shorter tires, big piece of metal, little strip <laughs> of rubber on it. Well, having been in the tire industry all these years myself, it, uh, you, tires aren't really pretty. They're not that much to look at, so I know that uh, you'd rather see all wheel and no tire, but that, that causes some issues in terms of ride, I know. And well, what do we have with the Cougar? Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm, I'm sure from the tire industry's uh, point of view, we're constantly challenging them because we're asking them to supply tires that handle fantastic, um, plus ride good, and get traction in all weather and on dry pavement. So uh, that's something we're challenging them. On the Cougar, it's all alloy aluminum wheels. Uh, there's no steel wheel with a, with a wheel cover offered for Cougar, primarily because that's not the image we want. We consider this a sporty car. We want Mercury dealerships to have their first sporty car in a while. And uh, there's the 15-inch wheel, which five years ago was a large wheel. Now it's the base wheel with an optional, with these 16-inch wheels coming with certain packages. And the balance we were after was a wheel-tire combination that's impressive to look at and then offers the handling that we want. Mm -hmm. And the sporty series handles better, tighter, and still protects some ride gives the customer the comfort because, after all, we do drive a long time and a long distance. Yeah, we do. And, and, and Bob, I'd like to ask you a question. I love, you know, the sunroof and hatchback mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, but I also like to listen to my tunes and carry <laughs> on a conversation. Well, I'm a, I'm a big fan of sunroofs and I'm a big fan of no noise. Uh, I spent many, many years listening to every noise I could uh, testing. And one of the things I always look at when I test drive any vehicle is, can you open the sunroof and live with it open? And I was uh, really nice to see in the Cougar. It's a, it's a tough way to go when you have a hatchback type design too because the whole rear inside the car is wide open. And the more air that can roll around back in there when you open up a window or a sunroof generally creates more noise or more of that pressure on your ears. And I know with the Cougar, uh, the first time I drove it, I opened the sunroof and 65, 70 miles an hour was not a problem. You're still going to hear wind noise. But uh, it was not excessive at all. They've done a very good job of uh, maintaining the airflow up and over the top and not letting it get in. Yeah, the execution of the inside of the car in general is one of the things we're carefully proud of. Uh, it's not conservative in there compared to many Mercury's. It has some striking uh, materials on the seats and, and uh, quite a good-looking door panel when you open the door, but it wasn't typical Mercury, and there were some debates that went on with that. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like you, you came to some conclusions that uh, have truly produced an impressive, um, bold, uh, and expressive vehicle. Good job. Now we're going to join Bob and Jim at the car so they can tell us how Cougar's sporty performance matches its exciting exterior. Take it away, guys. I mentioned earlier that one of the things I love is the ability to have a you know, sports car, so to speak, but also have the convenience of all the space that's in the hatch. I owned one many years ago, more than I care to remember, but it's really nice to have the handling and all of that and have this much space. I also know from an engineering standpoint that when you cut a hole this big in a vehicle, uh, you've got some issues that you have to address to try and get that handling. What are some of the things that they had to look at? Well, that's right, Bob. First off, we wanted to have a functional vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, two doors sometimes are criticized for not being enough function. Europe still likes hatchbacks. The U.S. doesn't have so many. We said we think it's functional, so we took the challenge. And yes, you do without a lot of structure in here. We have to add structure, especially if we want to keep the low liftover gate, mm -hmm. a nice wide opening, and the fold down seats. But uh, that's an engineering challenge, and we did this. Comes with a lot of good features, such as these seats, you can fold down simply by pulling the lever here in the trunk. Oh, yeah, you just reach in here. Yeah, that's because you're, oh, you're going oh. into, into the hatchback oh, yeah. when you do that as opposed to doing it from inside, from inside or calling, sure. in, calling yeah. in and out. And now you've got casket size room here. <laughs> Package trays removable, uh, put it wherever you want, and you've got a lot of room. 
From a suspension standpoint, again, when you want to have as much space back here, but I know, you know, for the rear suspension, the rear suspension, in a lot of respects, is more important than the front from a handling standpoint, but you need to leave space underneath there for all of the arms. Now, that's got to be an issue as well. Yeah, you, you handling fellows will, uh, will appreciate. There's a lot of space protected uh, for the suspension. It's a forearm link, which really means there's two side arms, a strut, and a link keeping the suspension in place and the tire facing the way you want it to be facing. Mm -hmm. It actually helps in a little bit of dynamic maneuvers, lane changes. There is no particular design feature in it. It's just very well set up and tuned by the engineers. The geometry of each piece was uh, refined, as was the shocks and the sway bars to control it. The whole suspension is something we're kind of proud of, the way the car drives, the way mm -hmm. it handles, the way it feels down the road. Front suspension is on an isolated front subframe, which virtually means it's isolated from the rest of the body by just a thin layer of rubber. That gives you a little bit of quieter ride, but also that subframe allows us to keep those suspension components and therefore the wheels and tires located ex exactly where we want them. Okay. So obviously then you, you designed the hatch along with the suspension components to make sure that you could have both worlds. Basically. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you, we went at the whole car concept, a functional sporty car uh, that also is good riding. We actually raised the rear deck. The stylists were able to bring in the high, high deck and the new edge look. Mm -hmm. And that gives us more room more back, room here, back too. here, too. Yeah. Sure. And room for the rear passengers. I know even a lot of hatchbacks, when they came way down here like this, the hatchback didn't do you much good because you couldn't close the hatch and still have anything inside. The stylist had a challenge to make it look good uh, with exactly. the Exactly. Another issue that I have with the car and when I saw was the fact that the, uh, the offering of a five-speed manual transmission with both engines. You don't see five speeds very often or manual transmissions at all, period, anymore. And a lot of times on the upscale engine, the bigger engine, you can't get a five speed with it. There are actually more manual transmissions out there than, uh, than we, we think in, within Ford Motor and Lincoln Mercury. We actually sell fewer than some of the competition. They might run as high as 20%. We run less than 10%. So for this car, uh, especially since we also sell it in Europe, where manual transmissions are the rule. They run 80% right. manual right. transmissions. We developed and kept in the lineup a good, a good manual transmission behind both engines. It's a sportier car, and for those who like to drive a sportier car, the manual transmission is often preferred, uh, simply because you're a little bit more in control of the powertrain. Right. Well, I know I prefer manual, uh, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the four-cylinder base engine with that manual transmission is a very nice package to drive. It's not the hot rod, it's not the race car, but it's a very sprightly car. It reminds some of the people of uh, 60s sporty cars, mm, okay. uh, smaller things like that. Well, the manual definitely helps performance when you're looking at a smaller engine, too, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, it's, it's a five-speed with a nice overdrive gear for, for fuel economy. It comes out of uh, Germany, I think, is where we make the okay. five-speed. The four-cylinder itself is not, uh, it's part, both engines are part of the Ford's new family of engines. We call them modular, but what that really means is dual overhead cam, which helps RPMs, better horsepower at higher RPM, but I can still have a small engine for, right. uh, for fuel economy. Sure. Uh, Four-cylinder has all the magic that we have in some of our biggest V8s mm -hmm. right now at Ford. And the six-cylinder is all aluminum, plus has twin intake systems. Uh, there are a lot of nice features in both engines. And what the customer ends up with is a nice broad power range from start up all the way uh, up through his power band. This is not an old drag racer. This is more of a handling uh, uh, faster car. It's more of a, a road course car mm -hmm. we consider. That's, that's what we wanted it to be. Now we hope that uh, the customers agree with us on that. Well, a big issue for me on, quote, handling overall performance is not only all the pieces outside and the suspension, but how does the car feel when you're inside? And it has a lot to do not only with just feel, but actually how the car is able to be handled by the driver. And you need to have a feel that you're part of the car instead of just being outside and running it by remote control. So I'd like to go inside and take a look at the things that you've done on the interior of the car to also make it feel like a handling vehicle as well. <laughs> It seems like we always talk about handling, performance, all that from the outside of the car, looking at the suspension and the engine and all that. But from my point of view, and from the point of view of the driver, this is where handling feel begins, and that's inside the vehicle, behind the wheel of the car. And I think it's important that this is designed around that. Uh, you want to have the steering wheel lay right where your hands are comfortable to be able to control the vehicle, along with, obviously, a good steering suspension system. 
and the controls, the gear shift lever, and the controls that you're going to use quite frequently to be right at hand here. Now, one of the things I noticed is that the interior of Cougar carries over that theme, that new edge theme, and it's very unusual, but everything is still laid out very easy to get to. Well, yeah, the concept for a sporty car that we're pursuing was keep it simple, uh, keep it functional, everything you need, but not cluttered. Mm -hmm. You have a tachometer, you have a climate control system, you've got the particulate air filter, which is really a European and higher series thing, but we thought it was important. You've got, this is the non-smokers pack this car is equipped with, which allows you to have a storage bin, retains your power point. Mm -hmm. You can have an ashtray if you want, no cost, handbrake where you want it, and then, and then the seats themselves, uh, a lot of design effort went into that. Well, I noticed on the seats, for me, I'm obviously fairly small. Uh, these seats actually hold me in place. And as a driver's car, when I go around a corner, I don't want to spend half of my time holding myself in position. I want the seat to be able to do that. But they also feel fairly firm. Well, what's the deal on that? Well, firm seats, uh, firm seats work. That's mm -hmm. really the answer. It scares some people. It scares some of our dealers. Uh, but our seat evaluation, our drive evaluation team is not even allowed to rate a seat until they sit in it for at least three hours. Oh, okay. that's, our, that's our rule because then you can tell how it will fatigue you. Our general philosophy is the less we make you do, the, the more comfortable you'll be long term. Sure. This is a driver's car. If you can get a customer in to drive it for a while, they'll start to realize I'm, I'm expending less effort. I'm reaching less far. I'm not working to hold myself in. I can reach the wheel with a tilt column. I can grip the wheel with, okay. the, with the way the grip's shaped. That was the philosophy behind sure. it. You get them out on a, on a good road, uh, especially something that challenges you to work a little bit, mm -hmm. and you'll find you'll work less in a Cougar. Okay, so you work less. You notice how on a windy road, which is really where this car should be taken on a test drive, because that's where you can feel the, the control of the vehicle, the response, um, of the suspension and not only the suspension and exterior but also how well the interior environment helps you use all of those features that we've already talked about. Yeah, you'd be surprised how hard a lot of cars make you work. That's right, no, <laughs> that's great. An attractive performance car like Cougar might not be expected to perform well in the areas of safety and security, but the good news is it does. Let's talk about that. Bob? Well, one of the things that I really like to focus on is what I call active safety as opposed to the, the passive safety that you see on TV all the time, and obviously Cougar has uh, a number of issues there as well, but to me, a car like the Cougar gives you a better ability to avoid the accident in the first place, which is about as safe as it gets. If you don't hit something, you're in a lot better <laughs> shape no matter what. But Cougar obviously does have a lot of passive safety features as well that uh, Jim can probably allude to better than I can. Well, yeah, if you do end up in a collision, Cougar is uh, another example of Ford's commitment to safety in all, in all aspects. Right from five mile an hour bumpers where you can bang into things a bit and not uh, pay so much for it all the way into a full collision where the car is designed, like all Fords are, to protect the interior, to protect the occupants. Uh, Cougar has uh, absorptive front frame rails and a front subframe, which take up quite a bit of forward impact, and uh, structure design added in the back for rear impacts. Also, it has the second generation front airbags for both driver and passenger in all cars. Uh, once again, just helping keep the, the driver and passenger in the right position, safe. Uh, also, we have the optional side airbags, which deploy from the seat. Now, one of the advantages to that is different size drivers put the seat in different positions. And an airbag that would, say, deploy from the headliner or from a pillar next to you might not be in position if you were, had the seat all the way forward, all the way back. Whereas as we deploy from the seat, it deploys upward, protects your head, and your side of your chest, it can accommodate you wherever you are. That's a coming technology, and you're going to see some advances in side airbags in the next five years in all cars. How about any lock brakes? Well, one thing I wanted to point out even before mm -hmm. any lock brakes is to make sure that everyone realizes that the number one safety feature in a car is the seatbelt. Because all of these systems that we talked about are designed to work with the seatbelts. If you have your seatbelt on, you're in a lot better shape, and no doubt about it. Um, talking about the ABS brakes or bringing that up, uh, one of the things that, that is interesting to me all the time to see, I live in Minneapolis, and it seems like in the wintertime I see people flying through intersections because they have ABS brakes and they think that for some reason ABS defies laws of physics or something. 
And the bottom line on ABS brakes is that they are not designed to stop you any, in any shorter distance. Uh, right. That's not the goal. The goal is to allow you to control the vehicle while you're braking. Uh, I've tested uh, millions of miles in cars. And no matter how good a driver you are, you're never going to be good enough to use just the right amount of braking under all circumstances. And with ABS brakes, it allows you under that panic stop situation to just slam on the brakes and still steer again, trying to avoid the collision, which is still the safest possible way to be. Now, Bob's done it under race situations for money, I presume. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, the big bucks, that's right. <laughs> but when our customers get into a problem, um, it's usually unanticipated. Uh, very few of us get the track time. I don't even get the track time that I'd like. Uh, so ABS uh, and traction control, but especially ABS, is there as our customers get into trouble. Uh, a panic stop uh, is often as hard as they can break. It's, sure. not a, it's not a controlled thing. And that's, that's what we're designing for. And put a lot of tests there. We do steering under heavy braking, lane change maneuvers, um, I'll call it went too fast on an exit ramp, uh, <laughs> steering and braking uh, at a higher speed. Sure. Uh, all those tests are there. And uh, these cars perform nicely without interfering with the style of the car. Well, that was one thing I was going to bring up, too. Many, many cars I've driven, uh, the ABS brakes actually kick in too often and too soon. The traction control is way too conservative. It's, it just actually slows you down and keeps you from enjoying the car. And one thing that I usually look at any time I drive a new car, and I try and, and do that often, is whether those devices are intrusive or are they just helpful. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Cougar, I can honestly say that uh, both the traction control systems and the ABS systems, to me, are designed to work when they're needed and stay out of your hair when they're not. <laughs> and it makes it more fun to drive. Any, well, I'm sorry. I, I was just thinking something Bob said. Um, this is an all-speed traction mm -hmm. control system, and what mm -hmm. that means is it's truly operating all the way through the speed range. Mm -hmm. Many don't. Uh, more and more are, but many of the competitors are a lower-speed traction control, just getting you to take off on snow or slippery pavement, and then they turn off at 20 miles an hour. Uh, for Cougar, uh, being a European heritage, it, we chose to put the all-speed version in there because it gives you a little bit extra control yeah. edge at high speed, too, medium and high speed. Not that we'd want you to do anything that might lose traction there, but once again, uh, as, a, as a distracted driver going home from work, I you don't know, always right. obey the laws of physics. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can have fun in the car and feel safe as well. It makes me feel much more comfortable. Thank you. Well, we've covered a lot about Cougar today. Let me ask you a question. Pretend for just a moment that Cougar is not a car, but a person placing a personal ad. How would that ad read? <laughs> oh, okay, I got it. Let's see, muscular good looks. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, I don't know how far to carry this. Mus yeah. <laughs> but still sensitive to your needs. Oh, I like How's that. that. That sounds great. <laughs> Does that appeal to all the women out there? Is that pretty good? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. How, how about young, European, likes to be handled, <laughs> <laughs> likes to meet someone who likes handling, no weirdos, please. <laughs> Good, I like that. Thank you both for joining us today. We appreciate <laughs> you. you taking time out of your very busy schedules. And for additional information, consult your product portfolio. On behalf of Lincoln and Mercury Education and Training, I'm Joyce Harvey Spear. Good luck in 2000.